motivate you and have you think outside of the box. My name is Hugo Almeida, and with over 30 years of being an entrepreneur, I am here to share and inspire you with my experiences and help invent a new you. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to T20E World. Hugo here, and today I'm excited because I have a young entrepreneur with us here, Anthony Whitaker. Anthony, say hello. Hello, guys. I'm excited to be here. Um, first time. And yeah, man. Great podcast. So. Awesome. Glad to have you here. And today is that one episode a month that we do. I'm glad to have you today. The episode is all about question and answers with an entrepreneur. So Anthony is a senior, right? Old Dominion University. What are you uh, majoring in, Ant? Right now I'm majoring. I went from criminal justice all the way now, computer science, graphic design, a lot of different stuff going on here. <laughs> Uh, that's great, dude. So, so Anthony brings entrepreneurship, and Anthony and I have had the opportunity to actually work together. He's part of our team, our marketing team. Um, we know we picked him up through Pangea.app that we had a guest of last month, and you're part of the top emerging talent program, I hear, Ant. Yes, Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Um, yeah, so joined Pangea a little bit before I started um, with your company, maybe like a month before that. Um from there, um, I just started selling and was getting clients, working with you as well. Your reviews helped out. I um, applied for it and was accepted out of um, 1% of the people accepted into the program. So it's been great ever since. That's awesome. That is awesome. And I know you're, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with you now, what, four months we've been together? Yeah, yeah, almost four, uh, four months. That quick. Let me ask you, how's the experience been? Uh, it's been great. Even though it's, um, <laughs> yeah, even though it's virtual, it still feels like, Actually, I I know a lot about you guys. I feel like I've I mean I literally do work with you every day, and then um, every day it's a really family environment, and I, and I love that. Awesome. So talk to us. I know that uh, you started your own company some years back now, huh? Called Unparalleled. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So Unparalleled, as you see, I'm wearing on my shirt here. Oh yeah. Unparalleled is an athleisure clothing brand um, geared towards pushing out a message that you are your only competition, um, and to retrieve your reflection, meaning. Regaining possession, of your, regaining possession of yourself. So, cool, that's awesome, dude. I like that, and I love the logo. Thank you. I know that you also have some other some other brands, correct? Well, yeah, I have. Well, this clothing brand, um, and I, along with my other business partner, his name is Christian Womack. Uh, we run a IT consulting and business development company. Um, where that's his that's his baby, but I definitely um, have a position over there and help him out a lot. Uh, so, so my take on you Ant, has been awesome, man, because, uh, you're a hustler. I love it. We, uh, we connected from the immediate start. You know, I, I interviewed Anthony some months back. I interviewed several other people and I, I have to say they were all pretty awesome, but Anthony really kind of fit the mold, the culture that we have here in our team. And it's just been a pleasure to work with him. He's a young entrepreneur, gets it, goes and gets it every day. Rises and shines, hustles yeah. and grinds each and every day. I love that. So today is all about question and answers. You've been with us four months now, and so I'm going to, like, turn it over to you, and you could just ask away, man. Ask as many questions as you want. I will do the best I can to answer them, okay? So um, let's go. It's all about uh, you and your questions, my friend. Right. Um, so a few questions that I've always wanted to ask entrepreneurs. I mean, I asked some, but sure. this is a question I definitely always ask is um, – what are some of the mistakes you wish you could have avoided early on in your own um, or throughout your entrepreneurial journey? So some of the mistakes, well, I always say that if I could go back and kind of redo something, it, it, it really would be that I would uh, focus more on the financial education because, you know, when I was your age, starting different businesses, you know, you, you, at, back in the day, you just kind of did a trial and error. I didn't have really a go-to individual. I, had, I didn't have a mentor. You know, I always talk about my father, right? My father was my mentor. He was everything mm -hmm. to me. But unfortunately, we, we lost him early on. And uh, after he was gone, it was just hard. Everything had to be figured out. And the one thing um, I definitely would do is just spend more time on the financial side. Why? Because yeah. in business, um, you know, you have great business ideas. You launch them. But sometimes you spend too much time on them and you lose some money. You know, like you make money, but you lose money. I like the business that makes money and then makes more money. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So when you're young, you, you kind of do the old roller coaster ride. And I'm not saying that roller coaster ride ends, it continues because you know there's always changing markets and economies, etc. Yeah. But I that's that's the one area I would have focused a little more on, even in college. I like I always say, I listen, my kids, both of them financial majors. I think that's huge because they got the business mind, you know. That's one of the things I would have done different. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad you said that because even for myself, I realized that I need to focus more on that side as well and not wait too long. It really is important. It goes right by me. So I appreciate that. Cool. Um, to move on, our second question is, how do you handle adversity and doubt? Adversity. Hmm. Well, listen, in business, especially in entrepreneurship, you're 22 years old, and I'm sure you've already dealt with adversity, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've had doubts in your mind already about what you're doing exactly. because that's common. That's common. The most important thing I would say for any entrepreneur is when you're in this game, you, 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 first you got to know what you're getting yourself into, right? Mm -hmm. I always say it's a 24 seven gig. You got to be level headed. You know, you got to, you got to be level headed so that you can think clearly should anything come up, you know, any adversities, if you have doubts, you got to be able to really make smart decisions at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, you don't want regrets. You don't want to look back and say, oh, no, I could have, I should have, I would. No. So at that moment in time, if you could, if you're level headed and you could think clearly and you, with all the facts that you collect, make that decision right or wrong, you made the best, <clears throat> excuse me, the best decision at that moment in time you could have. So mm -hmm. important that. You deal with adversity um, level-headedly, be able to think clearly. And it's not something that's easy in the beginning. You know, it's something that takes time to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, but listen, when you have doubts, it's important to do the research. Now, back in the day, it was a little more difficult because, you know, you didn't have the ease in the uh, early 90s of uh, the Internet. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, it's at your fingertips. So when you have doubts, never, as an entrepreneur, be afraid to ask. Research, ask. I always talk about mentors, right? It's important that you have somebody in your corner. I agree. I agree. And I'm, I got, I've been finding, I've got that person in you. I realized, and I've been like, before I started working with 220 World, I made sure I always had someone that I can go to. So Good. I can definitely. You're really ahead of the game, my man. Appreciate that. Oh, trust me. <laughs> um, so, my next question is what makes a good leader, and how do you know who was a good fit for your team? Well, first and foremost, what makes a good leader? Uh, my opinion on this, and I'm sure there's a bazillion different opinions, but my number one opinion on this one is uh, unselfishness. Mm -hmm. A true leader is one that wants you to be better than me. I will, if I, I always say to people that I work with, especially the, the young entrepreneurs, if I had a fiber optic cable, and I could connect it between myself and you and just transfer data, I would love to. Mm -hmm. I would save you so much time of figuring things out that I had to do myself over the, over the last 30-something years. So unselfishness, and, and I'll tell you why I say that. As you're developing, as you're growing, and as you're launching business, you're going to come across a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of friends, right? Yeah. But They'll always be in your side when you're doing cool things, but they not necessarily want to see you succeed. There's a lot of selfishness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of selfishness out there. I personally don't like that crap. So a good leader, in my opinion, is one who wants you to be better than themselves. You know, one that's going to actually say, hey, Anthony, this is what you need to do, my man. Think about it like this and then let you run with your idea. But yeah. kind of guides you, you know. That's a true leader, in my opinion. Someone who's totally unselfish. You know, it's funny with that cable you was talking about. That might be more possible in this day and age than you uh, think. <laughs> you know, the other thing I, I, uh, and you said, uh, how do I know someone kind of fits, you know, on on my team? Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you came on board, you know, you you. We have set a culture within our organization, and, and you're going to find that no matter what company you ever go to, there is a culture. Yeah. You know, some people never even – some people that work there years don't even understand what the culture is. But that's the top's fault for not having from the top down understand 
what the true culture of that organization is. So, so when you have an established culture and you meet with people, you, you kind of know, you get that warm gut feeling. You know what? I think they would make a great fit. They got the values. They got the integrity, the respect, everything that this company is made up of. You know what I mean? That is how you find out who is the right fit for your team. Okay. That's good. And I'm glad I was able to fit that mold for you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're awesome. Appreciate that. So um, my next question is here. How did you know when you had the right idea? Woo. That's a good one, man. So, um, all right. So like I said, I've, I've been in the business world many years, right? So I have seen all of the evolution of technology, right? Starting from before the, well, Internet's been out forever, right? When mm -hmm. the government had it, but but really in the early 90s is when it got launched to corporations. So back in the day, it was just trial and error. You know, I mean, I had I had like a detailing business, a painting company. I even started in the early 90s a translation marketing business because I knew the Latin markets where it's the next hot thing in the US. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, then I, I rolled into my ABI, which was Almeida Barragan International Company. I had an export company. And I had lighting distribution. So what I'm trying to say is in, in, in my career, a lot of it has been trial and error. Now, I always say that it's not that any of those companies failed. You know, some did better than others. Mm -hmm. Like Abitronics, which still is in existence today, and it's going on its 19th year as an independent corporation from the ABI group. Wow. Um, that company just, it just, everything just clicked. We... We're growing the exportation, you know, all the exports on technology, and we just started clicking with the right accounts. You know, like I always say, um, you know, you got to do your homework. You know, you got to try to penetrate the markets. You know, sometimes you get a little bit lucky because you're at the right time at the right place. You know, things start happening. So mm -hmm. it did with that business. It was a division in the 98. 99. Eventually, it spun off in 2002, became its own independent company. So kind of, again, I did a lot of trial and errors, but you kind of know, you know that, listen, let's put our efforts in Abitronics because we are, we're on to something here. You know, we see the market potential, we have the tools, we have the people, and you know, we, we actually knew the technologies so, and we were really good at explaining solutions. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I went about it. Okay. I like that. Um, so what are some risks and sacrifices you had to take or make? <laughs> oh man, the first one that pops out, I mean, this is like a no brainer. The first one that pops out in my life was leaving corporate America. And, and I'll tell you a quick story. Not too many people even know this, but, uh, when I was leaving, it was my time to go at Avaya, right? So Lucent and, it, you know, then we were in Avaya. So telecom was, it, it was going through some changes, Avaya, Wall Street, et cetera. And, um, so it was my time to go, but Meanwhile, you know, I was married. Mm -hmm. I had two little children at home. I was buying our second home. Uh, uh, you know, we we're blessed to have a short house. And I was, uh, I was just about to close when I was leaving. Oh, man. And I'm like, listen, I was telling my wife, I said, listen, this is do or die. I said, we're going to close on that house. And I'm not going to look for a job because I'm, I'm going to go full time with Abitronics at that time. And wow. it was like, you know, you, yeah, are, are you nervous? Uh, absolutely, man. Two mortgages, two little children at home. And here you are going full blown with your idea. And, mm -hmm. you know, my wife was just like, oh. but, you know, we're blessed. It happened. It worked. And here we are today, 19 years later, you know, that company's still around doing well. You yeah, know, so you that was the one that hit me. Yeah. What's that? Imagine if you never took that risk. You don't know. Where yeah. Well, be. that's that's an important point you just bring up. It's It's knowing the time i always i always say anthony when i was in corporate america i already had a business so many people on my team had no idea because i i, I reported to corporate i gave them everything i had i mm -hmm. excelled at what i did within corporate but i already had a business meaning i was testing the waters way before i left and i knew that i was on to something going back to your question i knew mm -hmm. Abitronics, out of all the divisions out of the company that I had started back in 94, this is the one that really was starting to grow year over year. And I said, you know what? If I could do this full time, I think I could make a living off of this company. And it did. 
It did. Wow. That's good. That's 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 amazing that you took that risk. Like I said, um, once COVID hit, I've been learning to take more risk, and I did so. Um, like I told you about how I took a risk to go <laughs> live in Miami, basically for three months from August to October, and just yep. grow our business there um, through the market for it. So I, I definitely cool. think taking risks is very very important. It um, is. If you don't take the risk, you don't know. It could, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You're absolutely Whatever right. It is, you never fail. So, listen, you learn you're that. you're level headed. You're an intelligent young man. You're an entrepreneur. In your twenties, do it. Yeah. Do it. That's my advice. Take the risk. You got nothing to lose, man. Mm -hmm. You got no, absolutely nothing. You're going to recover. If you fall flat on your face, you're going to get back up. Now, if I fall flat on my face. I am going to get back up yeah. because of who I am and I'm going to hustle and try to come back. But listen, reality is you're young, man. You're in your early twenties. This is the time to figure it out. This is the time to take the, 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 the initiative. You know what I mean? Take those risks, you know, yeah. do something that you felt. I don't know about, you know, I don't feel comfortable. You freaking try it, try it. You just don't know. You got, you know, it's different. You, you know, when you're married and you're having children and you have a home, you got to kind of think about things a little bit differently. Yeah, but you you know can't I mean? afford to take that risk sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, if you go down one thing, you're bringing down the family, the house, yeah. the children. You know, you don't, you don't want that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, you, again, you said you've been an entrepreneur um, for a while now. So, oh, yeah. what's you motivated every day and to con makes you continue to keep on going? <laughs> What keeps me rising and shining, hustling yeah. and grinding. Exactly. Passion, man. Passion. 100% passion. Love for what I do each and every day. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not painting a pretty picture. It's not like every day. You know, there's mornings when there's issues or you're trying to figure shit out. You know, you're like, uh, but, you know, your passion oversees everything, man. And, you know, again, I go back to thinking clearly level headed, right? Because there's days that are challenging and you know that getting up, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like you bounce out of bed and you're jumping for joy. Mm -hmm. I get out of bed every day. You know, I am grateful. I got out of bed. I always talk about that, right? Many people didn't, but I'm going to go about my day and I love the passion because I'm loving what I do. Now, there's days I got to take on the issues that I've <laughs> that have been waiting for me, mm -hmm. you know, but you get through it. You get through it, man. And, uh, but. Again, if if uh, what motivates me each and every single day is is, is the passion I that I have, the love for what I do. Okay, and I actually have a little story to tell. So, um, yeah, in parallel, my past one of my past business partners, we ended up having like a falling out because I believed he was too money motivated, and I didn't want anybody like that on my team who's putting money first there before everything. So, what that's are right. your thoughts on that? Like, what do you think about someone that's too well, money motivated? Well, first off, Anthony. That's a that's a lesson to be learned, right? Because, mm -hmm. in other words, you were setting a culture for your organization. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a tone that you want within your company, right? You're setting. Mm -hmm. You're the you're the CEO. You're the owner. You're the founder. You got to set the tone. Yeah. The culture for that company. If someone really doesn't fit, and is not eye to eye. Listen, when I say eye to eye, I, I'm talking the values, the the core, right? The integrity. Yeah, the you know, if if they're not on the same page. It might not be the perfect fit. Now, I'm not saying you're going to agree upon everything. Mm -hmm. you know, someone within your organization, it's good to get challenged once in a while. But listen, if you're taking, and it's all about the dollars, yeah, and it's about you, and meaning, see, there's two ways of thinking of this. You always want companies to be successful and to make the revenue. Okay, that's money. But when an individual is thinking about themselves and then all about them making money, when the business is not generating the money that they should be taking, exactly. there's an issue with that. I got a huge issue with that. And you know what? Um, even Rohan Marley, in our interview, we had him on a previous podcast. He talks about that, too. Yeah. You know, same thing. You know, was, uh, he had a partner at one time and, uh, uh, you know, he didn't have the skin in the game. He wanted to have a big paycheck, mm -hmm. a big paycheck when you're not generating big dollars. No. Yeah, yeah. Not. And everything you to do is with the money at the front of your mind. And I, I felt like, and this is how I see it, is like, if you're just chasing the money so hard, it'll never really come to you. Nah. You got to do no, money's you want to do. So, so, so you're, thinking, yeah. you're thinking right now of like, no matter what happens in this business, I'm still going to get that paycheck. It's yeah. not how it works, my friends. Is that, that ain't corporate America where, you know, you're an employee, you know what I mean? And you're going to get that paycheck, whether Wall Street loves that company or not. 
you're still going to get paid. Now, when you're an entrepreneur and you're running your own business, listen, you got to know the numbers, you know, and you're, I'm all for making the money when yeah, you're sure. you're asked to make money for the company. But again, that goes back to uh, your previous question. Uh, the third question you had asked me uh, about, you know, good fit for the team, good fit for the team. Yeah. You know, how do you know you're a leader? Well, if there's no fit, you know, and, and it doesn't fit within your culture of the company. It's, it's just not meant to be. And listen, it doesn't mean you get like in a, in a hatred fight forever. Mm -hmm. It's just, you think your thoughts are on different levels and you just wish them the best of luck. That's one thing I got to tell you though, you know, a true entrepreneur, it, it, it's going to pat them on the back. You're going to go your separate ways and you're going to wish them the best. Yeah, really. You're going to always wish them the best. You know, you're going to continue doing what you're doing, but there's going to be a time many, many years in the future when that individual learns lessons, life lessons, business lessons, he's going to remember who really wished him luck. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to see the differences. And by then he's mature and he's mm -hmm. going to say, you know what, Anthony, I remember back in the day, I should have stuck it out with you. Yeah. I believe a lot of them don't think like that. <laughs> it's not going to happen now. Yeah. It's not going to happen now. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll happen much later, but you'll see. Shoot away. Yeah. Ask away, my friend. Um, yeah, so how important is building relationships and networks? Oh, dude, it's everything, man. Building relationships is everything, and establishing networks is, is huge. So it it's building relationship when you're young, it takes time. So mm -hmm. you so you know, and 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 it takes time only because of your age and your exposure to individuals your exposure to events but that comes with time so what happens in the business world is you start dealing with many different people you start building a network without realizing it and you start yeah. clicking with individuals that have they might be within your business in your industry but it takes time to build it now i will say this though don't don't waste time early on like you're 22 you're yeah. going to be 23 soon don't waste time with with people that, you know, they they're always talking, always talking to the game. They're like, dude, let's do something, man. Let's do something. Let's put something together. Let's let's launch a company. I mean, everybody, you know, a lot of people, and I get it, you're young, you know what I'm saying? But just focus. If you're if you if you got your entrepreneurship hat on, man, focus on the bigger picture. Focus on what you truly want that organization to become. Because that's what you're working for, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's people out there like, you know, that again, going back to selfish and unselfishness, there's people out there that they say it, but they don't do it, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's people that don't want you to do good, you know, so, so don't waste your time with those individuals, especially those, I call them the preachers. Yeah. I'm sure you've already <laughs> met them. They preach, they know everything. They preach to you that you should be doing it like this. You should be investing like this. You should be... And then uh, you get in your car or you walk away and you're thinking, wait a second, what have they ever done? You realize they haven't done, sh sh you know, nothing. Yeah. So you're like, listen, that's why I say focus and surround yourself with people like yourself, you know, because as you get older, those relationships, like you're in your twenties, dude, when you're in your forties and these people are, are executive, it's, it's like, you're going to text them. Right. They're mm -hmm. going to be in a board meeting and they're probably going to text you back like, dude, you know, that's yeah. relationships. Now, networks keep building it, mm -hmm. you know, thank God for you guys. And, you know, with LinkedIn today, it enables you, obviously, to in, in a certain digital way, network within organizations, within, you know, it's it, it, it it's good. It's good. It's a good way yeah. to kind of get to individuals, you know, who's the executive level people um within organizations you know but sometimes linkedin has become almost like another platform for social chatting and stuff so yeah. it's you know you have to kind of you know like any social media platform you know exactly exactly but the thing i do appreciate about linkedin is um like beforehand you could never see like you said the executive positions unless you look on their website but now you can actually oh yeah check with these people like oh yeah specific for sure so for example um recently a lot of People that were connected with me was like the product line manager for like Nike and Under Armour. 
I'm like, oh, cool, awesome. that's interesting. Like, stuff like that. Like, I never even uh, thought about connecting with somebody in that position, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah listen, I'll give you this advice hard. right now. Mm -hmm. Never be afraid to reach out to anybody. Oh, Listen, yeah. at the end of the day, you got to look at it like this. And this is one of the things I always did is I looked at individuals. And again, I got this from my parents, right? Mm -hmm. The, you know, the, the core that they set in me. I look at everybody as just another human being. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all on this planet trying to do the best that we can. Some are not trying to do the best that they can. But the thing is, don't ever be afraid to reach out just to another human being. Forget the titles. Titles to me yeah. don't mean squat. And I'll tell you. A lot of the people up at the top, a lot of them, not all, but a lot, they love the younger hustlers, you know, the the, the true entrepreneurs that respect their time. You know what I mean? You're not going to just, you know, call the chat. Hey, you know, maybe you yeah. give me an idea of what I should do. No, that's the dude. When you reach out to these executives, you better be like, hey, listen, you know, it was a, it's a pleasure. I'm reaching out to you. This is kind of what I'm doing right now. I would love mm -hmm. just to kind of bounce ideas off you from time to time. I respect your time. People want to hear that. You know, they, they, some people listen, it's all about mentoring. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. So don't ever feel like, you know, like some people, that's the, what they don't do. They don't reach out and they don't reach out. Contacts today are at your fingertips, man. Yeah. The easiest was ever been is right now is just to yep. send a direct message to somebody. Yep. And, yeah. No doubt, man. Yeah. So um, to move forward, um, right. to what do you attribute your successes? Well, you know me now, Aunt, four months, and you know I'm a big family guy, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the culture in this company first is family, then business. Um, but I attribute, listen, even if I've made some amazing decisions over my career, I always and always will attribute everything to my parents, the core that they instilled inside of me. After my parents, my sister. My mm -hmm. sister has always, always believed in me, man. She, my Without my sisters, you know, I'm incomplete. She has believed in me since I was a little boy. And then I have to say my wife, my gorgeous wife, who has been in my corner. And you got to remember, like, I met my wife at your age, you know, and and uh, she married me. And I just, she knew what she was getting into with my crazy brains of entrepreneurships and constantly <laughs> yes. hustling to make a dollar and launching new ideas. And not once, not once has my wife complained. She has been wow. always my, my, you know, she, she has backed me, supported me, encouraged me. She's been there through the ups and the downs. And then finally, my children, man, my children is just, they just give me the purpose of, for what I do each and every single day, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're young. Yeah. You're going to meet a girl. You're going to get married someday. And I hope you do. And you have children. Things change with every part of your life you know what i mean yeah yeah and I, you know, I've been with my uh, significant other now uh, for seven years so i definitely oh, I, yeah awesome. it's been so i, I can kind of relate but it's not yeah man yet, no, but, no for sure listen you want <laughs> somebody that i'm not gonna say my wife hasn't panicked god knows yeah. that poor woman her she's got a strong heart man because she's been <laughs> she's you know, she's, yeah, yeah. like she sees me sometimes and she's just like oh man and i'm like listen we're, don't worry about it we got yeah. this but, you know, so that, yeah, so that, you know, I'll always attribute my success to the, the core, my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always important. Family. No doubt, man. For everything, so. I agree. Um, and right before I ask you uh, just a little piece of advice, I want to ask one more question because I struggle with this myself. Um, how do you learn when to say no? <laughs> oh, man, I'm laughing, uh, Anthony, because that's, uh, I'm Ecuadorian, right? Mm -hmm. And the hardest thing. The hardest thing for an in our culture is to say no. And this, I'm laughing because this has come up. This has come mm -hmm. up with my other friends, entrepreneurs. They're also Ecuadorian, and they're like, "Listen, the, the, one of the problems is that we don't say no, and we wind up sometimes just out of our hearts. You know, we say, yeah, 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 you know, and but you're like, oh my god, you know, this is not that easy. You know, it's going to take. So, two things of advice there is, uh, you know. If you're able to, if, if the individual is able to respect your time and you respect their time, I think there comes a point in professionalism where, listen, this is just overwhelming and I can't take this on. It's just, it's, it's not on, it's, it's not going to benefit you at all. Now mm -hmm. I'm all, I'm all about helping. I am. So I tend to say yes a lot, but I have learned 
flat out sometimes that it's not maybe I don't give them a harsh no. I just tell them it's just not something that I have the absolute time to devote to. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a nicer way of kind of saying no. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, you got to like I always take it on, prof on a professional manner, you know, so, but if people really don't respect your time and they expect you to say yes, uh, listen, don't be afraid of just to give them a flat out dude. Yeah. No, can't no. do. I can't do it. Yeah. But it's, 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 I, I hear you, Anthony, but you gotta, mm -hmm. again, I'll, I'm going to go back and it's an episode that people should listen to. It's, it's respecting time because that's one thing, one thing that you're going to learn as you evolve in your career, you're 22 going on 23, mm -hmm. 10 years, my friend are going to go like that. Oh yeah. You're not, you, in Get 10 years, I want you back on this podcast. You're going to have a couple bambinos running around your legs, you know, <laughs> a house doggy. And, and trust me, that's, you got to respect time. Things happen mm -hmm. quicker than you think they will. Yeah. You know, so don't waste it. So that, yeah. so, so to get back to that question, it's so important to be able to say no in a professional way. If you, if you can, you know, because you just want to maximize your time in your life at that moment, in that era of, you know, your evolution of your career. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right, what do we got? What do we got, Ant? Um, Shoot away. Yeah, so, I mean, I just want to, this is the last question I have really for you is just, if you have one piece of advice to someone just starting out, what would it be? Like that major one headline piece of advice. <laughs> Oof, just one, huh? Okay. All right, for all the young entrepreneurs out there, my advice, Hugo's advice to you is really, if you're thinking about getting into the business, first do your homework. And um, definitely, definitely surround yourself with good mentors. Uh, if you do your homework and you're surrounded with good mentors, mm -hmm. you know you can bounce ideas as you're building them off of them. You're not going to waste their time because you're coming with something solid. Yeah. The other little piece of tidbit advice, I'm just going to throw a couple other layers on this, mm -hmm. is when you're getting into the business world, my advice is to always make sure to separate the emotions from the business. That's and I'm going to explain that really that's, quick. That's not the tidbit. That's the one that I, I yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, has, it goes with everything else, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, and the reason is, Ant, we're passionate. Entrepreneurs, if there's one thing you'll learn is that everybody that's – in business is passionate about what they're doing. Right. Yeah. So they get excited, man. I, I mean, I'm going to open up a bakery. I don't know. But the mm -hmm. thing is this, have you done your research? Have you bounced off these ideas with other mentors that might understand that bakery business? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then the thing is, you got to be able to think it as a business, not with your heart. You know, when you're passionate, you have it all mixed up. Sometimes it's all in one bucket. You got to separate it. And I'll, the reason you got to separate is because sometimes you got to make harsh decisions, man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, when your heart's set on that, you're a great baker. It might not make business sense and you're going to have to part with it. Yeah. And when your emotions are intertwined with the business, you, you don't want to sink with the ship. Mm -hmm. You got to be smart enough to be able to, you know, move out or tweak it. You know, yeah. you know, I always say plan, do, check, plan. You know, it's important that in the career you're constantly tweaking. You want to keep you want to keep growing that concept that you had and be able to be, modify. Look, look, last year, 2020 pandemic, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I always talk about it, right? Rethink, you know, review it, rethink it and reinvent it. Yep. You know, you had to be able to pivot. And that's the same thing. So, again, it's so important, like I said. Do your homework, surround yourself with mentors, separate the emotion from the business piece and be able to tweak that concept constantly. Yeah, or, I that, agree. that is my advice. That's a great piece of advice. I agree with that 100%. Very cool. Listen, you yeah. know what? I I, uh, I know we've been on, on this uh, podcast for a little bit now. I uh, As we start wrapping, I don't know. You have any other questions for me, first off? Sorry uh, about that. No, you're good. No, nah, that you answered every question I really had. Those are some of the major questions I thought about. Um, that is that all I the to get asked and yeah. You answered all, all the thoroughly. Questions. So yeah. So Anthony, let me ask you this. I'm gonna turn the roles around now to you. If um yeah. as a young 22 year old entrepreneur, what advice would you give to some of the hustlers out there your age? 
Um, so I kind of have like three small pieces of, like you as well. So um, the first one is patience. Um, it took me some time to learn this, but you have to be extremely patient. Don't think something's going to happen tomorrow or even right. next week. As long as you continue putting in little pieces every day, eventually it'll come together um, no matter what. So it's no patience is very important. Um, next is you never fail. You only learn. Um, a couple other people on former podcasts um, that you had said this, but even if you take that big risk and it doesn't necessarily work out, it's still a lesson to be learned out of it. It's not a failure. It's okay. Now you check that off. You did that. So now, you know, maybe that won't work. Let's do it this way. Instead of being confused on two pieces that you never know will work or not. Cause you never took that risk. Um, Dead the on. last one piece of advice relates to um, my brand on parallel. And that's you being your only competition. When you realize that ever like you, talked about earlier in the podcast that everybody's a human being, everybody's a person, everybody has different stories. So why are you trying to compete with them when you have your own path that you, you just got to realize you're the only competition at the end of the day? Yeah. Sometimes so, I often say that. that's freaking solid advice, my friend. Yeah. yeah. I always say sometimes we're our worst enemies, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. we set up our own obstacles, but Anthony, thank you, man. That was huge advice. And uh, listen to all our listeners at T20E World. I'm going to open this up for any young entrepreneur out there that kind of wants to huddle with me. We select one individual every month or every two months, I believe, and we put them on our program. And you can ask away anything that you want to ask me. I will try to answer it to my, the best of my ability. So send us an email. Go to our website and send us an email, T20EWorld.com. And for today, we are wrapping up. Anthony Whitaker, thank you so much for being our guest today. I hope I hope I answered these questions. You I hope thank you. For you. And uh, thanks again for being uh, uh, you know, on our podcast here, T20E World. And to all our listeners, this is Anthony Whitaker and Hugo, and we are checking out.